Hi, I'm Jeff, and this is Advanced Effects Part 3. If you watched Part 1, you should have a good understanding of how the Blackout Effects Engine works, and if you watch Part 2, you should be able to create common effects across any of your lights using the Effects Engine with the right tweaks. You no longer have to rely on those subpar built-in effects in your fixtures that don't offer much control. Today, I'm going to show you how you can apply those effects across any group of lights using the right offset. In Capture, I have a 10 by 12 grid of 120 tungsten fixtures patched one to one, meaning each fixture has its own DMX address that is the same as its channel or fixture number. So from the top left to the bottom right, it's channel one is address one, channel two is address two, and so on. From a new project and location in Blackout, we can see we are actually ready to go because we are already patched one to one. Channel one is address one, channel two is address two. Let's begin by creating a group of all of our fixtures by saving channel one through 120 into group one, and we're gonna label this all. If I double click all and do flash flash, which is channel check at full, enter, you can see that this is the order of the selection that I just recorded. I can take this now, record this into effect one. I'm going to label this base. And now if I played this effect, you can see that the effect is running individually across every single fixture in order of my selection because that's how I recorded the effect. One through 120. I'm gonna go ahead and press stop. And just to kind of like emphasize the point, if I change the timing to zero, and let's do the trail to 50%, so that as soon as one fixture goes, the next fixture is gonna go after the first step. And then I'm gonna put the total time down to like 0.5 and I press play. There you go. You can see that is how the effect is playing across those fixtures. Okay, but what if I wanted to do something like row by row? This is where offset comes into the picture. Let's go back to groups. Let's take our all group and let's press offset. Here on the right, we are presented with some options that we can divide up this group. And on the left, you can see the preview of what that selection looks like. We're straight right now, one through 120. But if we wanted to do row by row, we know that there are 12 fixtures in each row. So I can go to this channels per group and I can now specify I want 12 channels per group and it will divide the selection up accordingly. If I go back to offset, you can actually see in the first subsection of this group, it's one through 12 and then it's 13 through 24 and so on. If I go ahead and record this now into group two, I'm gonna call this rows. And now if you double tap rows and you do flash flash at, let's say 25%, we wanted to flash them at. We press enter. Now you can see we are going to be going row by row. If we go ahead and take this, record this into effect two, let's save this. Again, let's go ahead and make my timing zero and we'll do the trail to 50% and the total time to 0.5. Now if we press play, there you go. You can see it's going row by row. Well, what if we wanted to go column by column now? Let's stop this. Let's go back here. Let's go back to our groups. Let's take our all selection offset. What would we do? This time we wanna do an offset in a similar way, but we wanna be able to do columns. And we know that there are 10 fixtures in each column, and there's going to be 12 groups of those fixtures of 10. But this selection is a little bit harder because we're not gonna divide this evenly row by row. So how do we do this? Well, let's do channels per group, 10, but let's go back to offset and that's where this interleave button comes from. If you press interleave, this will now interleave the selection of those 10 fixtures throughout your total group. So if we go back to offset, you can see I have one, 13, 25, 37, and so on in this first group. It's not one through 12. It's every 12th fixture because it's 12 groups of 10. So now if we go ahead and record this into group three, and we're gonna name this columns, save. We can take this, record this into effect three, 
columns. And again, let's go ahead and actually, I'm going to do something. I'm going to go to the base. I'm going to save this as a preset. Enter. Okay. Go to the columns, apply this preset. Great. And now if I play this, you can see we have columns. What if we wanted to do an odd and an even section? Let's stop this. Let's go back. We're going to go back to our groups, take our all group, go to offset. This time we want two groups, right? We want one group that's odd, one group that's even. So if we do number of groups and we do two, it's going to do like our police lighting effect in section two of advanced effects, where we had one half of the tube going, then the other half of the tube going. Because if we go back to offset, look at you can see one through 50 is, or one through 60 is in this first group. And then it's going to be 61 through 120 is in group two. But what we want to do is interleave that selection so that it's every other fixture, right? Now, if we do interleave, you can actually go back to offset and see what it's done. As you can see, here's all the odd groups. And after this would be all the even groups. So if we go ahead and record this now into group four, label this odd, even, record this into effect four, odd, even, press save. And now we're going to apply our default base preset. And now if we press play, it's a fast little odd even dance. And you can see it actually goes row by row, which makes sense because you have all the odds that line up and all the evens that line up. So it's just a quick little dance. Okay, that's cool. But you know what's even cooler is you can actually do a lot of this if you plan on using interleave in the effect itself. So that's what the grouping does on the right hand side of every effect. It takes the number of groups and it interleaves them. Why do we do this? Because most of the time you want some kind of symmetrical effect and this gives you the best results most of the time. So if we were to go back to our base, remember if we press play, this is just a straight selection of all of our fixtures. Let's go ahead and press stop. We can actually achieve a lot of these same ones that we've done because we use interleave. So for example, we know that we just did odd and even, which was two groups interleaved, right? So if we just change the grouping to number of groups and put two here and just press play, it's the same thing. Let's go ahead and stop. <clears throat> Let's put these number of groups to something that would give us columns, right? So we did columns by doing 10 channels per group. But what we want is actually 12 groups of those 10 channels, right? So if we did number of groups 12 and press enter, there's our columns, 12 groups that are interleaved. Okay, but now let's do something cool. What if we wanted to have two groups go to kind of like make this a little bit more flashy across our grid, right? Let's stop this. We have 12 groups. And so one out of every 12 is going. Well, if we double it, we can half the groups. So let's do six. And now if we press play, there's two lines. What if we half this? Go three, there's four lines. So now we kind of got some cool dancing going on, but perhaps this is too symmetrical or it's too boring because it's only going across the grid in one direction and we want to shake it up a little bit. What would we do? This is where you start to throw in some odd numbers that don't divide evenly into your group's fixture count. This will shake up the order in which your effect is going to play. Watch what I mean. Let's stop this. And let's do number of groups to say 11, something that doesn't divide evenly into that 12 by 10 group. We press play. That's kind of cool. Now we have a diagonally down effect. What if we wanted it to go the other way? Well, by playing around with it a little bit, you'll see that a group of 13 will take you in that other direction. What would if I wanted the same thing, but just going down instead of up? Well, that's where this reverse button comes in. Now you can reverse the effect on the fly. Let's try another one. Let's do number of groups five. That's kind of a fun pattern. And again, we can reverse this. 
So you can get some pretty cool results just by changing this grouping parameter if you understand how it will divide up your selection. For those instances where you don't wanna use interleave, just make a selection in the channel view and record that into your effect. Okay, let's all think of a familiar scenario in film that we all know and love. Poor man's process or rich man's process. Maybe you have two strips of LEDs, whether they're color forces, studio forces, astera tubes, sky panels, whatever the case it is, let's say it's these first two rows in our grid. So it is a two by 12 grid. What if we wanted on both sides of the car, so say the first row is on the left side of the car and the second row is on the right side of the car to go at the same time, but just one fixture in each thing. We know how to do that now, right? We can just take our selection of one through 24 and offset it. So let's go ahead and do that one through 24 and let's offset these. Now we could do this two ways, right? We could either do two channels per group, but if we offset this, we're not getting the right thing. So we need to interleave this, right? If we go back to offset, you'll see, okay, so one and 13, two and 14 and so on. Or if we go back, let's clear this selection. Let's go one through 24 and offset this. And if we did number of groups, think of how many groups you would want. You'd actually want 12 groups because it's 12 groups of cross of two fixtures in each thing. So we could do offset number of groups, 12 offset interleave. But we know if we use interleave with number of groups, we can actually do this directly in the effect. So all we really need to do is take channels one through 24 record this into a new effect. We're gonna call this um, process. Pull out our effects tab, load our preset. And now we put the grouping number of groups to 12 and press play. There you go. Let's make this a little bit more of a chase, right? Let's stop this, let's put some timing up here. You go ahead and press play a little fast. Okay, there you go. So that's kind of cool. There's a couple things to consider when creating effects, especially when it pertains to color that can really mess you up. Let me show you with this P3 color behind me that I have patched into blackout into mode 13. Now I'm gonna show you this transition by going between two looks, but this same principle applies to the transition between two effect steps. So let's think of a familiar situation we've all been in where you're setting levels with your light and the gaffer likes this, it's at 3200. But then he's like, oh no, the DP wants to see some color. Let's, let's pick a nice blue. So you put your crossfade up, you go to the color wheel and you pick a nice blue, maybe there. And then right before the take, he says, the DP hates this. Let's go back to 3200. So you take your crossfade out because maybe you'll go back to that blue at another time and you have that color kind of saved right here without actually saving it into a favorite, right? So you go ahead and you record this as your look one and then the gaffer throws this on you. We wanna make a nice transition to red. How would you do that? Well, if we take our fixture and we put the crossfade up now and we go all the way to some kind of like nice red that we can go to maybe here. And now we go ahead and record this as look two. What you may be thinking is, oh great, it's gonna go from 3200 to this nice red. Well, if you click look one and click look two, it looks like it will do that with zero timing. But with timing, watch what happens. Go to look one, press play. You see it went to blue before it went to red. Now, why did it do that? If you remember, if we go back to our look one, bring up our fixture controls, we have that blue color set in our color wheel. Now, we're not seeing that because the crossfade parameter is at zero right? But as it's transitioning to look two, this crossfade is coming up 
at the same time as this is going from blue to red. Now, as you can see, as soon as you're putting the crossfade up, you're getting that blue tint into the fixture because it's transitioning to color mode while again, your color is in blue. So what you really need to do is you need to be presetting this in your previous look to the same color of your destination so that the only thing that's moving is this crossfade channel. So you can see, look at, we're at 3200. And now if I just crossfade in that red, it's a lot smoother and a more direct color transition by just using the crossfade channel. So if we go to look two, you can see we have our color queued up. All we need to do is take this crossfade out and re-record this as look one. We're gonna overwrite look one because we want the red color to be queued up, but it's in 3200, right? So we go to fixture controls. It's queued up, but we're still in 3200. And now when we play the look, it's a straight transition from 3200 to red. Now this may seem kind of trivial to some people, but when you have an effect and you're doing color transitions, a lot of people don't set that color wheel for the next step that it's going to go to. And so at the tails of your chases or your effect, you may see some like color fringing going on. And it's probably because in your previous step, you have your color wheel probably set here. And in your next step, you probably have it set somewhere else. It could be anywhere else. So what you're seeing is a color transition to that weird white, whatever that's gonna be with the fixtures, LEDs all up to that color. And if you don't want that, you need to be preloading your color into the previous effect step. So that's something to be aware of when creating your color transition effects to make sure that you're getting the transition you hope to achieve. If you found this video helpful or enjoyed it, please give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.